And so as my point was that I found it very, very interesting that the vast majority of those who shared it at the beginning, before it became viral, quote unquote, uh, were people of color, basically, using the American terminology, of course, because it doesn't technically mean color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as Laura knows. But it's, it were people, basically, who were not part of, they, they were not white. To use that word, they've been marginalized. Yeah, to, for for some, for like one way or another, without getting into too much detail. So it was like black communities in in the UK. It was Muslim communities in the UK. It was black uh, people who are part of the Black Lives Matter in the states. Uh, even like uh, people who are part of the indigenous movements in Latin America. It it really went. You can see that this this there's a global narrative just waiting to be called global because it's already there. It's not that we really need to do anything. It's just that the, the the number the attention that it gets is not proportional to the attention it deserves. I guess if that's global lives matter. matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will agree a lot with that. Uh, I I think in fact it was very interesting that point that Joy just underlined. You know the idea that you have the regional uh, the regional and the global. I think most of regionals are, are also global, but we're just seeing just one regional. You know, it's one region that becomes global. Mm -hmm. And then we get ideas like non white, ethnic, and what, normal? Uh, so the, the center is always the same people. The center of power is always, it always looks the same. And at the end, is. Um, it's you know even these divisions you know we talk about the so-called third world the global south it's it's these things are always very difficult to talk about but at the end there's one there's one definition that I kind of like that they talk about the majority world because at the end the center of this world that we see as global as the center it's very tiny and and I just wanted to say that with, with respect to that it's uh. We're talking about grieving right now, whether it is in, in, in Beirut or in France. And uh, w this conversation that we're having is very important, but the, the reason why I thought it might be better to talk about race and Islamophobia and all that when cooler head prevails is because right now a lot of people are, are grieving in, in Paris. And uh, I think uh, we need to let that process go because you, you cannot really choose when you grieve or why you grieve, right? It's like, it's an emotion, it's raw, it's like falling in love, it, it, it just happens. And if we train too early in, to, to police and tell them, hey, you know, you should, uh, there's also other tragedy in the world that we need to be paying attention to, we might be doing something uh, not too far from the polarizing effect of things, you know. Uh, they're grieving right now, it's just grief is, is universal. And that needs to happen. I'm, I'm not saying that's what we're